In my 2.5D videos, I showed this clip of creating this 3D house model. Was going to Blender, slap my image on a plane, cut it out with the knife tool, and give it some thickness. Since then, it's been haunting me via your guys' comments. It was a bit of an oversight on my part. I made the clip super short and simple because I see it as just using the Blender basics. The thought never occurred to me that others may not have ever used Blender, let alone a 3D software, before watching my videos. So in this video, I'm going to take you guys on the journey with me and even show off an alternate method of creating a pixel art house. For the first method, let me start off by saying it is probably not the best way to create this type of model, but it's the way I did it for the video. Anyway, let's get started. If this is your first time in Blender or any 3D software, I highly advise you to learn some of the basics and come back to this video. But even so, you might be able to get by without it. I'll try to keep it in mind and not use any shortcuts, even though it's basically a reflex by now. And instead, I'll rely on hitting the side toolbar buttons instead. So let's get started. Let's delete the default cube. And let's add in a plane. So add mesh plane. Okay, so now we have a plane. But in order to cut the house out of the plane, we're going to have to put the house on the plane. So let's come up to the shading tab here. Let's create a new material. And with our new material created, let's rename it to, I don't know, house. We're going to add a node, so click the add button. And let's come down to texture and let's select image texture. And let's just drag that here and connect the color to the base color. Okay, perfect. So now we have an image on our plane and let's select the image. I'm just going to click the open button and navigate to where my image is. Okay, I've taken the liberty of separating all of my sprites and I'm just going to select the house full PNG. So now that the house is on our plane, which you can see right there, what I'm going to do is reduce the specular and the roughness so it's not shiny anymore and we just have that plane image. Now let's go back to layout and let's click this button right here, which will allow us to see our house. Next I'm going to zoom in and maybe I'm going to hit the 7 button. And all that does is just put in an orthographic view so we can see a little bit better. And that was the 7 button on the numpad, just so you know. And we can hit tab, which will bring us into edit mode. And now we can start editing this plane. So we can use this tool here, which will create some loop cuts. So let's do that quickly. I know it's not the knife tool just yet, but... You'll see why we're going to use this. It'll make things a little bit easier. I'm just going to put a loop here. And I'm going to put a loop here. And we might as well put one more just at the top here. And then let's select our faces and hit the selection tool. And then just shift select all of the faces and hit the delete key. And delete the faces. So now we have our house cut out a little bit better. We could probably also put a loop cut here. And then select and select the face and delete the face. Okay, that makes things a little bit easier. We might be able to add a loop cut here as well. Just about there. Another loop cut right about here. So we just separated this little piece. So we can now select that and delete that face as well. Okay, things are cut out pretty good and they're straight edges, which is just a little bit easier than using the knife tool. So let's zoom in and we are going to select the knife tool, which is this little tool right down here. And now we're just going to click, let's say here. And then click, let's say, here, and hit the Enter key. And that just created a new face. So I'm going to just select the face so you guys can see. And I might as well delete it while I'm here. Next, I'm going to select the knife tool again and do the same thing, but on the other side. Let me click here. 
and then click here and then hit enter and then let's delete this face so we have a little weird edge here i'm not too concerned about but we should definitely tidy up this edge here and we could probably just add another loop cut just like so and i know it might cut off that but i'm not too worried about it it shouldn't be too noticeable in the final result we we'll probably even select this vertice and just use the move tool and just kind of move that over and up just a little bit so it's a little bit more in bounds okay and our house is now cut out so let's switch back over to the object mode i'm just going to hit tab which will do that and we can zoom out and we now have a house cut out so let's select our house and we can rotate it on the x-axis here by 90 degrees and now our house is upright and then i'm going to hit this move tool over here and just drag it up so that it's in the middle we can also make the origin the 3d cursor and that'll just make things easier when we're in unity we'll be able to move it around the ground a little bit easier next let's hit the modifier properties and add a modifier and let's add a solidify and this is exactly how we give thickness <laughs> and honestly that's just about everything that you need to know we can apply this modifier and hit tab to go into edit mode and you could as a little bonus start using the knife tool and cut some of these things out and give them different depths so let's just do an example of that so i'm going to select the knife tool and i'm just going to make a rough outline of a window it's not going to be perfect it's just to show you guys and hit the enter key and then i can select my window and I can use this fancy extrude region button. And now the window is extruded just a little bit. We could also control Z that and just tuck it in a little bit. And now the window is inside the house. And that'll just create some extra shadows and highlights where things should be. You can do the same thing for these beams here. And don't worry, this won't be blurry when we're in Unity as long as we select bilinear and make sure that we don't compress our sprite at all. It's just using some of its own anti-aliasing and making it a little bit blurry right now. And with that, you can now see the window has some depth and that's just about it for this method. So I'm going to hide this plane and I'm going to create a new one and we can go over the second method. So let's create our plane, come up to the shading, Go hit new material and I'm going to name this wall. And then let's add a texture, image texture, and drag this to our base color. And then I'm going to open up in that same root that I was in before. And I'm just going to select a wall. And now let me go back to layout and I'm just going to hit seven on the numpad zoom in well i should go back into shading and give it no specular no roughness head back to layout and we can cut this thing out i'm just going to use our loop cut and i'm going to cut here and i'm going to cut here and i'm going to cut down here and up top Okay, let me select those faces and hit the delete key. And now we have a wall cut out. Okay, cool. So we could add a little bit of dimension to this wall. So let's do that by hitting the inset tool and we can just inset it a little bit. And with that inset, we can extrude it and we can just put it in a little bit. And that just creates a little bit of depth. That's probably a little too far. So I'm just going to undo. And something like that should be fine. 
the next thing I'm going to do is get out of edit mode and come over to our properties and rotate it by 90 degrees. And now we have a wall, move that up and set the origin to the 3D cursor. This is the 3D cursor down here. If you haven't realized that when we set our house model and now that we have a wall, we can hit shift D, which will duplicate it. I right click to leave it in place and we can rotate it 90 degrees in the Z axis. And then we can move that forward. Something like that and pull it back. a little bit more something like that if I wanted to be super specific I would be keeping track of all of these positions looks like 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 it should be lined up pretty much perfectly and then we can duplicate this again and we can rotate this by negative 90 and then we can put negative 0.5 and there we go now we have two walls and then we can duplicate this one rotate it by 180 and then i assume this is going to be 0.5 here uh, it looks like it's probably one so we can do one okay so now we kind of have some sort of a house and to make things a little bit nicer we can take all of these and just shift clicking them all and we could hit Control j and all this does is join them all into one object so when we hit tab and go into edit mode we can select every single one of their vertices and we can just join them together and this will just make sure that everything's all nice and lined up so if we just select both of these, we can right click and we can merge the vertices, let's say at center. And you can see that just joins them together. I'm just going to do it for all of them while I'm here. Okay, they're all merged and I'm going to exit out of edit mode. And I'm just going to rename and hide it. So let's call this walls. And then I'm just going to hide this for now. And now let's add in a new plane. And go back to our shading tab hit new and let's call this i don't know roof and then add a texture an image texture select the color to the color and go back to this path and we have a roof and then no specular no roughness come back into layout hit seven on the numpad and we can cut this with loop cuts. You can see this is all pretty much the exact same process. It's just the same thing over and over again. And then let's use the selection tool and select those faces and then delete them. Say delete faces. And what would be cool is maybe giving these slats a little bit of extra depth. So we could just use the loop tool. And just start loop cutting everything. And we can just select every other one. Something like this. And then we can just drag them down a little bit. And we get some sort of a little bit of a pattern. That might be a little too far. We just want like very subtle. It just gives a little bit of extra depth. And put our walls back in. So here's our roof. We can pull this up. And this is actually the front of our building. So we can kind of cheat a little bit. We could go ahead and make a nice roof and make a whole nice little building. But let's just do the hack way. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Go to our scale tool, scale it up a bit, go to our rotation tool, and rotate it ever so slightly. And if you're looking at it from the front, you would never know that there is, in fact, no roof behind it. So what would we do now? This doesn't really look like a building, it has no door or no windows. Well, let's just hide both of these, 
and create a new clean. And let's go back into the shading view, hit new, add a new input texture, and open up, go to the same route. Let's select the window and color to color and specular down and roughness down. Go back to Leo, select our plane, hit the seven button, hit tab, scroll in, loop cut. Let's loop cut right about here. Let's loop cut right about here, right about here and here. And then select the faces in the selection tool. Select all these faces, delete the faces, and now we have just our window left. Okay, so we can rename this to window. Just keeps everything organized. Select our walls, select our roof, select our window. Go to the move tool, get out of edit mode, and we can rotate this in the X by 90. And, and then we can just move it up. And again, like you would never know that this window is just a plane. This is probably the easier method to use and it does really look 3D. It would probably be a good idea to maybe put one on the other side so you could kind of see the roof if you went like this and maybe even just put some extra walls in. But everything is just kind of subjective. You can build your house however you want and this actually makes it all modular. So something that's pretty cool is we can select our walls here and if we go into our shading tab, you can see that we have the wall shader open. We can select our wall and open the image. And let's select this wall too. So it's just a slightly different color. And you can see that it replaces all of the colors with a slightly different color. We can take this a step further and select this black and white wall. And in Unity, you would actually have a color option and you could basically use any color on the color wheel. I'm just going to recreate that in Blender, so let me fast forward a little bit. Okay, so now I've just added a little bit of an add here with an overlay, which is basically what Unity does. And you can see our color is white here, and all we would have to do is go to the color wheel, and we could select any color we want our walls to be. So if you want it back to be brown, you just select some sort of a brown here, or basically whatever. You have a blue house, a red house, and that's how you would make like modular houses if you wanted to make like an entire village or something. So I'm not entirely sure what sick me was doing, but I kind of just ended the video there. So I just want to update you guys. Um, I, for whatever reason, decided to finish off the house and added this additional piece. Uh, I made the door and I fixed the roof a little bit. Um, this is the houses side by side with the two different methods and this blender file and all my assets are going to be made free for you guys so you guys can learn and make your own houses. I highly advise making your own sprites and just using mine as a learning tool, but there's nothing really stopping you from using it in your own game. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one right about here.